Okay, so this is the beginning of the next project. Um, a little disappointing. My chainsaw that I bought uh, this summer is a little smaller than I thought it was. I thought it was 18, but it's a 16. Um, this one here is an 18. So this is one I got at the auction the other day. What I want to do is I'm going to make I want, I want a rustic toolbox style pine box form. And what I was going to do was use this. I've got two of these. I got this one and then I got another one that's about uh, 65 inches long. So after I set it down and I measured it, it's not going to be anywhere near long enough. Uh, I don't have enough of that wood to be able to make um, it as big as I want to with those boards. It would just be a waste of that wood. Uh, it's not really good any wood anyway. It came from a pallet. But my intent was to have um, have these saws sit in the crate opposed like this with a longer one because this can take a 20 inch bar and I've got another chainsaw that doesn't run right now that already has a 24 inch bar on it so my intent was to make a box that was long enough to fit um, either of these chainsaws this one with the longer bar and preferably the other one with the 24 inch bar if I ever get around to getting it working again um, and that wood wasn't just long, just wasn't going to be long enough. So I went back out to my shed and um, the same guy that uh, left the oil cans in my shed left this side. Uh, it wasn't going to be a toy box. It's another pallet. Um, so we, we ran it through the plant. Um, it'll probably be, still be too heavy. Um, if anything, it'll just be a great place to store them out of the way. I can stack things on top if I need to or I can put them, I don't know. Um, but I got these, I got four over there that I brought in earlier today, uh, already anticipating those first 11 inch pieces not being big enough. So hopefully there's enough of these that I can get and, and probably the lid I, and I can just use plywood for the bottom. Um, and we'll find out. I want to do it a little bit rustic. I want to do some pretty coarse, uh, dovetails, mainly one, because I'm really not good at dovetails yet. And two, just because I want to try it, and then I'm going to use uh, regular nails to put it together. Uh, we use screws for everything, and I watched a video from the English woodworker the other day, and he was talking about, yeah, it's actually a pretty old video, I think, but I just saw it the other day, so it was new to me. Uh, he was talking about using just regular traditional nails instead of screws, and, and the benefit for those was primarily the flexibility of them. And I don't mean flexible as in versatile, I mean flexible as in they don't snap. Screws... Um, any sort of pressure, tension, lateral pressure, they have a high chance of snapping off, where your nails, um, they're, they're going to flex and bend with the expansion contraction of the wood, and they're going to last a lot longer. Uh, so I'm going I'm to give that a shot. i got a box of them, so why not? So we'll see what happens. So I'm trying my first attempt at a voiceover right now, and it's proving to be a little challenging. Uh, this video... At full length is well over an hour and 40 minutes, and there's just way too much for anybody to sit through on YouTube. Um, there's no way. I, I, I know nobody would sit through all that. So instead, I'm playing this video at 150%, and I'm just going to narrate a little bit as I see fit. So what I'm doing here is I'm joining all the boards so I can put them together. They're going to be joined with rabbits. Uh, my rabbits are half inch wide and then half the thickness of the board. Now I'm using my Stanley 78. I actually filmed a separate video during this process that I've already posted. You can check it out. It's all about the setup and use of the 78. Um, cut to length with my giant Miller's Falls miter saw. It's my only miter saw at the moment. I sold my electric one so that's what I have to use. It's a beast and it's really really uh, something to use. Uh, ripping the length, I'm using my bandsaw though. I'm just not into handsaw ripping just yet. And with broken ribs, I really can't saw that much. So what I'm cutting here using my dovetail saw are going to be the perpendicular supports that hold the walls together uh, of each surface of the box. And I'm putting a 45 degree end on them just to make them more practical, easier to handle, easier to interact with. Um, and then uh, using a little bit of glue and nails the technique I used, I learned from the English woodworker, is called clinched nails. And essentially you just use a nail that is too long and somewhat flexible. You pound it all the way through and then you bend the end 90 degrees 
and then you hammer that back in so that that point stabs back into the wood and creates a uh, almost a square shape. Unfortunately, my nails were the thin nails were too short and the thick nails were also too short, but they were long enough that I could still bend them over and get some of a clinch out of it. So the majority of the box, they're literally just folded over. So they're still going to have that holding power, but unfortunately it's not a full clinch. Um, the lid, I use my vice grip, uh, my needle with vice grips, and I was able to get the proper clinch on that. Here I'm just trimming up the ends, making them parallel so I can start cutting my dovetails. Uh, honestly, uh, this project, I really need to make a shooting board uh, for my hand planes. Um, right now I'm just doing my layout. My tails are an inch and a half wide and my pins are three quarters of an inch wide. And it, I really lucked out with that because that's actually an even division of this board from left to right uh, with, with a half inch on either end for the pins. So I, I really lucked out with that measurement. And this video is actually pretty long because a lot of it I'm talking through and explaining what I'm doing. Like, for example, right here I'm, I'm using my dovetail template from Amazon and with the sliding T-bevel I was explaining other ways you can lay out dovetails. Uh, unfortunately, everything in this video is really already on the internet, so I'm not gonna... I went ahead and cut that part out because I'm not teaching anything that anybody can't see in, in a regular dedicated video. And I may shoot my own dedicated videos for that later on, but this is important for that. This dovetail saw is a Spear and Jackson I bought at an antique store. They were asking 60, I ended up getting it for 40, and it was razor sharp. Uh, after cleaning up the blade, getting the rust off, it's not as sharp as it was, it's still extremely sharp. Uh, I do need to go back in and tune it up a little bit. And for those of you that are new to dovetails, it's really not a good idea to start on a soft wood like mine. Uh, these are actually my second hand cut dovetails ever. First ones were a disaster, and the reason why was because I was cutting along with the grain, and that disaster is the only outcome of that. So, uh, always cut on end grain like I'm doing what you see here. Uh, but pine, it just compresses under the chisel and it doesn't shear and slice the way you would want it to. So it's very challenging to do delicate, fine joinery with pine. Uh, this was designed to be rustic, so a rustic look was inevitable. And, and I, was, I was fine with that because that's what I was looking for. I wanted it to look like a rustic pool box. You know, essentially that's what it is. I could take the chainsaw out, put shells on the inside, and I just have a really large pool box. So I'm cleaning out the uh, valleys for the pins, obviously in this video, using my chisel. I went ahead and cleared the bulk away with the coping saw, and uh, I had a hard time with that. I ended up breaking three blades, actually, for some reason, and uh, I'm not sure exactly how. Um, but the last time when I put it in, without I put it in without realizing it, I set it up for the pull stroke, and that seemed to work a lot better, so that's probably what my problem was. So I, I laid the tails on top of this uh, end piece here to establish where the pins are and I'm cutting them out now. And once I get it all cut, I'm going to do a trial assembly which is what I'm working on right here and then I was able to measure the final dimensions for the, for the bottom of it. And I went through a couple different ideas for that and the end result was basically the results of many mistakes that I made. My original intent. Um, was to rabbit it and then once I measured it and started getting ready to assemble it I figured I would do kind of a half dovetail so kind of a, a rabbit with a taper that would wedge the bottom in I don't really know how to describe that and unfortunately um, I somehow despite measuring it accurately I cut one inch shorter than it was supposed to so uh, the bottom was sort of uh, well, just really bad. Uh, I ended up making a, a kind of breadboard end for the bottom to make it fit, and it, it eventually did in the end. And after all that work, I just decided to go with the traditional rabbit.
here you can see uh, working on the rabbits to join the bottom together. And, and beyond that, everything else about it, uh, with the exception of those breadboards I had to add on, went together the exact same as every other panel. Uh, just instead of being dovetailed, it's set into a rabbit and uh, held in place with nails. I've also got another video coming out on the 71 and the 71 and a half. Uh, I'm using my 71 here. I got a 71 and a half that I got at an auction and I fixed it up. There's a little bit about fixing it up is in the video and using it, setting it up. And I filmed it using these rabbits here. I just haven't released it yet. Using the low angle to trim the end grain on the dovetails to make it smooth. And now I'm using one of my antique drills to drill the pilot holes for some nails. I went ahead and added two small nails to each corner for extra reinforcement since I don't ultimately know how much weight's going to get in there eventually. These hinges were from a recycled, recycled ammo crate that I got from the recycle yard down the street from me. Um, I've got a few of them actually and essentially what I'm building is the ammo crate that I took those off of in a way. The nature of those hinges require a 45 degree recess behind them, which is what I'm making here. Nothing particularly fancy or special, it's just a different type of hinge. And then the, the latch on the front needs the uh, same sort of knockout, which is what I'm doing. What I'm using now is one of those self-centering drill bits. I finally bought one. I was using the Black Friday sale to my advantage from Rockler, and they had free shipping. Unfortunately, my order wasn't um, big enough to qualify for the free shipping, so I went ahead and threw these on there. I've been looking at them for a long time and just never made the commitment to buy them. I'm really glad I did. Um, for making hinges, they're the best thing ever. Or not, I mean, not making, but mounting hinges. Um, Really can't go wrong with them. Really glad I bought them. I bought that Porter Cable bit driver for Black Friday also. That's from Amazon. I already have a couple Porter Cable tools, so I'm trying to keep it, keep everything compatible with charger and batteries. So this Black Friday sale came with spare batteries and a charger, since I only had one before. Now I'm joining the edges, making the lid the proper width so I can establish um, where I'm putting the latch on it and I don't have to worry about it being in the way and have to take it off and start over and cleaning up the ends. Again, I really need a shooting board. I'm chamfering them while I'm at it too. That 6 has really been my workhorse lately. A lot of people try to talk me out of buying it, but this project was almost all number 6 and 78. Getting ready for a test run, putting my chainsaws in there. So I've got two steel chainsaws and one Poland chainsaw. Unfortunately, my Poland doesn't work right now, but the two steels do. And I, I really like them, which is why I chose the paint scheme that I did, which you'll see here in the end. So as, just, as I expected, it is slightly heavy. Uh, it's not too heavy. It's about what you'd expect but I uh, definitely need to figure out what kind of handles I'm going to put on there. And here we have some final shots of what the uh, finished product looks like. Plenty of room for storage inside. I can move that all around. I made this stencil myself actually. Uh, I got a separate video on that. I almost forgot to put my brand on there. Um, unfortunately, I branded it before I painted it, which proved to be a challenge later on, and I'm not really happy with that. But please like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, and thanks for watching.